In this video, I'm going to be talking about deposition processes that you could be using in the clean room. In semiconductor manufacturing, we use a variety of specialized tools to deposit materials such as photoresists, uh, conductive films like metals, or oxides like silica and hafnia. In this example, I've shown spin coating. Essentially, what spin coating is is where we take air or wafer, or substrate, which just means surface, and we mount it to a plate. We then spin this plate and at the same time deposit our photoresist on top. Because of the spinning motion of the plate, the photoresist spreads out evenly across the surface. And we can actually define the thickness that we want for the photoresist by uh, changing the speed and the acceleration of the plate. As you can imagine, this method is best used for flat substrates. When we try depositing materials on surfaces that have patterns or are curved, we get uneven film growth, and other undesirable effects. In this next example, I've shown sputtering. In sputtering, we use um, a plasma that we direct at a target. So plasma is just ionized gas, or otherwise known as our, or, or just a gas that has a charge to it. We take our ionized gas or plasma, and we direct it at our desired material. So in this example, it, we've shown gold. Uh, because the ionized gas is moving with such a strong momentum, these gold particles fall off and land on our substrate randomly. Um, sputtering is a physical process. Uh, basically what we're doing is hitting our substrate with such force that stuff falls off and lands on our wafer. This is in contrast to chemical vapor deposition. So chemical vapor deposition is commonly abbreviated to CVD. And what we're doing in CVD is taking our source material um, or the material that we want to deposit and carrying it through a reactor in the form of a gas. So usually we'll use, we'll carry it through with nitrogen or argon. Um, these uh, source materials then react with our surface. And that's what a heterogeneous reaction is. It's a reaction at the surface of your material. So when we're trying to make or optimize CVD reactions, we want to maximize these heterogeneous reactions. Um, to help facilitate the reaction, the reactor is usually uh, heated. So chemical vapor deposition is very related to atomic layer deposition. So this YouTube video is a great um, intro to ALD and has a nice animation on what the ALD process is. So if you have time, I highly recommend you copy this link and watch it. But ALD, or atomic layer deposition, is exactly what the name is. It's a method of depositing materials one atomic layer at a time. Um, ALD is advantageous because it's self-limiting, meaning that you can, it only reacts with the surface once, um, and then, and such that we can get very thin films. Uh, we also can achieve a large area uniformity because, again, it's only reacting to, with the surface one layer at a time. And finally, because of this, uh, we have very, a very high level of control over the entire process. So in ALD, we usually have two chemicals that are paired together. Um, for example, I deposit titanium nitride at Pickle Research Center. In pickle, uh, at pickle, the precursors for titanium nitride are TD mat or tetracus dimethyl amido titanium and ammonia gas. So precursor is just a synonym for reactant. Um, so with TD mat and ammonia as our precursors, we can form titanium nitride using an ALD process. So looking at this picture, um, if this were a titanium nitride growth cycle, we would first expose our surface to the titanium nitride, uh, the titanium source, which is uh, TD mat, and then the TD mat only reacts with the surface at at specified sites. At and then we purge the reactor, which means that we take away any of the excess gas, and we only have this one layer of TD mat that's reacted with the surface, and the ammonia gas only reacts where the TD mat has reacted. Finally, we then purge, and what we're left with are these titanitride films. So ALD is so advantageous, again, because it gives you a conformal film uh, with large 
with a lot of uniformity. So what conformal means is if you have a patterned surface and you're trying to deposit material on top of it, you get uniform thickness of the film everywhere, as you can see here. Again, because we're only depositing one layer at a time, and we can, we can only react, and that is because we can only react with one side at a time. Um, here you can see the difference between atomic layer deposition and sputtering. Um, with sputtering, you get non-uniform thickness at the tops of these uh, nanolines, whereas in ALD, you see uniform deposition throughout. So here are the primary components of an ALD reactor. Um, here we have our precursor, so our reactants. Uh, this is our chamber, so this is where you would load your sample. Um, here is the carrier gas line, so we run all of our precursors or reactants using a inert gas like nitrogen. And again, our, this is our main vacuum valve. So like we mentioned before, all of these reactions must take place in very pristine environments and operating at very low pressures with the help of vacuums, um, we're able to create this pristine environment. Uh, as you can see here, um, here we are pulsing some sort of oxide. Um, this first peak is one pulse of a reactant and the second peak is the second pulse of the second reactant. Or the first pulse of the second reactant. So when optimizing the ALD process, there's usually a window. So uh, these reactions have been worked on for many years now, um, and it has been found that if the temperature of the ALD is too high, then you get desorption of the reactants with the surface. So instead of the reacting with the surface, the reactants hit the surface and then immediately get purged away. However, if you operate below the ALD window at a lower temperature, these reactants can just condense on the surface and not actually react. Um, so there's what you call like an, an ALD window, uh, an ideal def I defined set of temperatures by which the ALD process is best. And you want to be at a point where the temperature is not too high so that your precursors desorb or decompose, and but high enough so that you can overcome the active ener activation energy required for the reaction. When choosing our precursors there's for these types of reactions, there's, these are things that you should think about. One is volatility. Sometimes we have great precursors, but it's impossible to make them a gas, which makes them unsuitable for ALD reactions. There's also reactivity. So none of these reactants can be air sensitive. Um, otherwise, uh, it would hinder our process. Um, also, they have to be stable, right? So they cannot decompose in the reactor, and not, if they decompose in the reactor at a low temperature, then that limits the temperature of our processes that we can have. And then finally, uh, in an ideal process, you know, there wouldn't be any side reactions or byproducts, but that's never true. Um, so whatever byproducts at that form must be easily purged away in the purge cycle, and also um, not have bad effects on the substrate, so they cannot etch the film or compete for other sites. So finally, the precursors have to be available. So a lot of these precursors are actually really expensive, and um, I know from personal experience that they can take up to a year to get to, to um, arrive in our lab. So plasma-enabled ALD is a special type of plasma, a special type of ALD process where we use plasma to uh, decrease the activation energy required for the ALD process. So if you guys will recall from chemistry, all chemical reactions have some sort of activation energy that they must overcome to actually happen. Um, using plasma makes everything more reactive and we decrease the activation energy. What that allows us to do actually is, uh, um, is it helps improve our ALD window. And it can also lead to faster deposition time because, again, everything is way more reactive. Um, and because of, because of these effects, we can get fewer contaminants in our film. And also, we can use the plasma to clean our reactor. So if you recall from earlier, plasma is just ionized gas. So if we blast the plasma throughout our chamber, we can use the plasma to knock off debris that's accumulated on the walls, and this will clean the whole thing. So we've learned a few um, deposition techniques. 
atomic layer deposition, chemical vapor deposition, sputtering, and I've included evaporation here because it's very similar to sputtering. Um, but in evaporation, what you're doing is, again, using, evaporation is also a physical process, but you're using ionized gas and hitting a target, and this time um, causing it to evaporate and hit your target, hit your substrate. Um, this table shows a comparison of all the deposition processes. Um, in ALD, the thickness uniformity is really good. The step coverage is good. The low temperature, we, we can have achieved low temperature depositions. This is also uh, really good for most processes. Um, it expands the range of materials you can use. However, the only disadvantage is that it's very slow um, or fair. Um, CVD, again, uh, the thickness uniformity and is pretty good. However, it doesn't get as good conformal coverage over patterns, so the step coverage varies. Um, again, there are some CVD processes that, that you cannot operate at low temperature. Uh, however, it does have a faster deposition rate. Um, sputtering and evaporation, where they really suffer from as deposition processes, is step coverage. Um, like that example I showed you earlier, you um, get non-uniform deposition across patterns. So that's it, and thank you.